Hello, thank you. That's an interesting addition to, the, to my introduction. Uh, hopefully it doesn't stick for too long. So uh, really great to be here. Thank you everyone for coming. Uh, and I'm kind of grateful opening this day up with uh, what is chain abstraction and why do we need it? So hopefully uh, you enjoy it and uh, enjoy the whole day. So I'll start with a controversial statement. The current applications that we have in Web3 are not real applications. They're front ends for smart contracts, but as a kind of the experience itself, it's a combination of the wallet, the bridge, the blockchain, exchange. And I think one of the like, interesting controversial statements right now that the state of the multi-chain experience in Web3 in general is Binance and Coinbase. That's really like what people are actually using as an application for blockchain. Because that's where you can go and actually has access, have access to all of the different um, you know, cryptocurrencies and various other applications and uh, use cases like lending uh, all in one place. And you don't need to like figure out how to deal with you know, chains, gas, fees, recovery methods, you know, secure account. And that's a very kind of you know, sad state in a way because you know, we started this decentralized um, kind of non-custodial user-owned uh, movement, but we ended up with centralized applications because they need to deliver the experience to the user. And so the current state is highly fragmented, right? We have, like, if you're launching on a single chain, you automatically limiting your target market, right? You, however that chain, like whichever the chain is, like by definition, it only has a sub, sub kind of section of users and even again, most users are, are not even on chain at all. We have highly fragmented everything from user experience, you know, like uh, with lots of wallets, chain kind of chains to select in a wallet, addresses, developer experience with different uh, kind of environments which you need to build for and kind of extremely hard to find applications, right? Um, like which ones are real, which ones to use, which chain they're on, which gas tokens to use there. I don't know about you, but I have, I think like a dozen wallets. Many of these wallets have, you know, like lots and lots of accounts. Each account like has something on different chains. Like sometimes I just sit in MetaMask and like switch networks to find where it is. Like <laughs> where do I actually have the tokens? And at the end, kind of the end users are just want the, you know, the opportunity that we're creating with these applications, right? They want an experience. They want, you know, be it entertainment or uh, kind of, you know, potential to earn money. It's not for them about, you know, choosing a chain and figuring out what is the long-term, you know, security uh, implications of a layer two. Uh, however, we think, you know, uh, talking about it on Twitter is that. And so how, do, how about we, instead of you know, continue defragmenting the space, which uh, we've been very effective at uh, for the past few years, how about we start putting it all together and really bring people together instead of kind of, you know, some of it, a bunch of beefs uh, on crypto, you know, or uh, each, each kind of community trying to uh, show off that they're better than the other. And so that's really what we're trying to do here. We're trying to create a new movement, a chain abstraction movement, that is about bringing people together. People from different ecosystems, people from different uh, kind of chains, from different environments, but also people that are not into blockchains to have the experience that they can, and uh, really provide, at the end, this kind of uniform Web3 experience that we believe is better than a centralized environment. So really grateful for all the folks who are here from Cosmos, the Ethereum ecosystems, and Solana ecosystems, and I hope we can continue bringing more folks together across the events around the globe. And as well, more and more people are starting to build kind of with that mindset in mind, uh, which I'm really excited about. And so a lot of the technologies have been built right now, right, be that 
you know, ag, ag layer by polygon, intent by, ano intents by anoma, uh, we have uh, orchestration by agoric, we have, you know, modularity by uh, Celestia and other uh, folks. Like, all of them are really a method. They're, you know, a tool, but at the end, what they're trying to solve is the same problem. It's like, how do we deliver this chain abstract experience? And I think that's really important. You know, there's a what we're trying to achieve and how we're doing it, right? And we, in crypto, are very good at conflating these two things and like talking about what we're doing as the main thing. But at the end, we should be kind of really focused on how we like, want to change the experience and how we are uh, delivering this to the end user. So for us, kind of this journey started a long time ago. When we started near, I mean, kind of our experience started with trying to build something on blockchain ourselves, and we were trying to build a data crowdsourcing for what we were working on AI at the time, and we found out that we were building something that was giving work to people around the globe, and in crypto, the first thing you needed to do as a new user was to buy some crypto to be able to use a crypto application which is extremely strange proposition where you say, hey, here's a job, but you need to actually pay first. And so that's why kind of when we started Near, our focus has been how do we kind of remove a lot of the, what is normal in blockchain, what was normal and kind of still normal in blockchain from the user and abstract the blockchain away while delivering on you know, global payments, global availability and censorship ability to actually access global market for anyone independently where you are in the world. So for us, kind of, we've always been on this journey. We mostly focused on kind of, can we make near to not be in front of the user and make it really easy to use, right? Everything from a kind of abstraction na natively built to allow, you know, easy onboarding. Uh, we have, you know, obviously scalability to allow kind of consistently low fees and, uh, kind of developer tooling that allows to build experiences that onboard you know, millions of people without them knowing they're using crypto. And somewhere kind of end of 22, beginning of 23, we realized that beyond this, like, you know, we are living in multi-chain world and more and more chains are kind of popping up. The, you know, ZK is maturing to a level where you can run you know, alternative kind of a layer two approach with zero knowledge proof, achieving very similar security guarantees that if you ran on layer one. And from that perspective, how do we deliver kind of this experience across the board? So that's what we're doing now. We kind of want to expand this idea uh, that Nier been working on and bring it to all chains. So, we started with obviously a layer one that's scalable, that kind of removes the need for people to think about blockchain as much as possible. Um, we have then uh, kind of broad data availability so that you can unify security for, uh, for layer twos, for rollups, while bringing the price dramatically down, right? We partnered with Eigenlayer to bring fast finality, to be able to take layer twos or other chains and finalize them and have a quick uh, cross-chain messaging uh, embedded into this. And finally, we're working with Polygon on ZK Vasm, which will allow to also prove the near blockchain itself and aggregate, it, aggregate security with other chains. Kind of all of these pieces together in a way unify security, make it uh, easy for users to not need to think about specific implementations of individual chain, individual roll-up, but actually being able to use all of them uh, kind of and have the same guarantees around security. Now, it's cool to have security. It's really important. This is what the space is built on. But the big part is the user experience. And so the main thing we've been working on has been how do we allow uh, individual user to be able to interact with all of those chains without needing to think about the kind of where that blockchain is and how exactly uh, to move assets to it, which gas token is used. And similarly, not just for users, how do we do this for developers who want to build contracts which live across blockchains? And so we're introducing chain signatures, which is a 
approach with a near multi-party computation nodes going to be maintaining um, shared private key where not, no single node uh, or even you know, a group of them can uh, pretty much do anything unless you have two-thirds of them uh, agreeing. To be able to sign transactions and have uh, kind of linked addresses on other chains. And this allows to have a very unique experience where you can kind of initiate your transaction on near, but it will be relayed on Ethereum or Bitcoin. You'll have a remote addresses. And the way to think about it is when you go to Binance or Coinbase, you sign up with your Coinbase account, but you get a lot of addresses on other chains, which you can deposit funds to and use them within your Coinbase account. Now imagine that, but non-custodial, and you can actually go and use that directly in other applications across Web3. That's what we're doing. There's a lot of technology going into it, uh, and um, folks will be ex expanding more on that. Uh, kind of one of the big parts is um, pretty much using uh, key resharing mechanism that allows to have uh, validators who maintaining kind of a who signing all of the signatures to join and leave uh, while maintaining the same key, and so. Like we build on top of this uh, the idea of chain signatures, allowing to now sign this and have all of the access controls all in your account, kind of all the account um, structure there. Now, the other important piece on top of kind of this account level of uh, abstraction and aggregation is the front ends. Because I mentioned in right now, you know, you go in like Google an app, you're probably going to click on something that's trying to fish and trying to steal all your money. And if you think of it you know, as new uh, layer two launching, there's applications there, how do you find them? How do you make sure they're indeed you know, verified correct? And at the same time, even when you have application, right, you know, Curve front end was hacked, a bunch of front ends were hacked. How do we ensure that we have security and consistency of smart contracts and the front ends you're accessing? And so kind of one of the frameworks we built called decentralized front ends is allowing to have linkage between the front end itself and the smart contract because the front end is deployed on chain. So the source code of the front end itself is on chain and it can be managed in exactly the same way as your smart contract. It can be a multi-sig upgrade, a DAO upgrade, or whatever uh, you have. Now all of this can be then aggregated into a single uh, kind of super app, a platform. And so an example of this is DapDap. DapDap is a, uh, a single application that has 14 layer twos, 150 different smart contract kind of accessible through it. You can find what those new airdrops are, find new quests, and be able to interact with all of this without leaving one single app. And kind of that's the idea how in the future we think all of this will start coming together, where you don't need to even later switch networks or know even which network which application is on because you have a single view kind of across all of the Web3 and you're able to transact with them and kind of move assets and value. So the benefit that we bring with NIR is that over the past year we've been really focused on bringing applications that have a lot of users, right? And so we focused on uh, Sweatcoin and Kaiching, which you know, have massive install bases. Sweatcoin, over 150 million installs of their main application. Kaiching is pre-installed on Oppo and Xiaomi phones uh, and has over 8 million uh, monthly actives. It's like 2.2 daily actives because they're on your home screen. We have Play Ember, which is uh, kind of mini games, as well as Hot that launched recently, actually it's 4 million now. Uh, that you know, is a telegram, viral telegram bot that allows to access Web3. And so the idea is all of these applications with all these users now open up their users to transact across all Web3. And their users don't need to know. They already don't fully know that they're using Near. That was kind of the benefit of how built Near was designed. And now they actually can access all Web3 without thinking about it. So this is all, you know, seems very abstract. <laughs> so what are the really kind of use cases that uh, you can achieve, right? So I mentioned obviously using uh, applications for Web3, but I think the core interesting applications, and again, you'll hear from some of them today, are 
being able to transact across all chains, right? Again, the interoperability of protocol of Web3 right now is Binance, right? If you want to send something from one chain to another, you're probably going to use Binance before other, like, uh, bridges, just because it's integrated, like, way more integrated than any actually individual bridges. And so Binance provides this multi-chain DEX, well, multi-chain exchange, right, that is, but it is fully custodial and uh, has a set of its own limitations. And so a multi-chain DAX that uses this technology can actually achieve uh, an experience where even though we literally launch in layer two right now, right, um, on our own laptop, you should be able to start using, you know, and transacting with it right away because chain signatures already can send transactions to it. Um, so you'll have an ability to kind of start interacting with all of Web3 uh, from a single place. There's applications which are, you know, bringing Bitcoin, for example, and being able to transact uh, across it with this blue here. We have applications that are trying to do lending and, in general, DeFi for non-smart contract blockchains. Um, and going beyond, right, as we think of, you know, true consumer applications, it, you know, they will launch in different places, but it should be accessible for all consumers across Web3. And so this is what we're really enabling here. So kind of to, you know, to contrast this, right now we're in this world where you know, we have fragmented experience. You know, if you're trying to use optimistic roll-up, you probably have some fun stock withdrawing. You have uh, you know, figuring out how much gas tokens you should have on different chains, uh, you know, lots of wallets, and uh, like you don't even know where your money is. Like I keep like trying to find things. For example, you know, miss airdrops. Like not you know, not all tools may support all chains. And really, with chain abstraction, we're trying to make it so you know you can swap anything uh, on any chain, even if it's just launched. You have uh, you know all portfolio aggregated, which you need you know data aggregation, and uh, you can you know leverage your BDC in other places with kind of uh, uh, Bitcoin layer twos. Um, and so you have kind of this ability to access all Web3 from one place. Now, I'll just mention that for near chain abstraction is, you know, it's an important step. It brings a lot of unity to the Web3. And for us, it's kind of something that we've been thinking from the start. But at the same time, the long-term goal is really to bring the full capability of modern technology and make it self-sovereign. That's why we've been talking a lot about operating system and kind of the idea of the self-sovereign operating system, blockchain operating system, that really allows you to kind of have control over your data assets and, and power of choice, power of governance. And so all of those pieces coming together also require AI. Um, and uh, I'm not gonna go too deep into this. If you're interested, we have at Middle Asia tomorrow, chat with Vitalik, as well as um, a few other things uh, over over the next um, few days. I'm also talking about things that Web3 doesn't want you to know about AI. So uh, stop by the soul. But just to give you a really high level, what Web3 and AI stack presents is really a combination of user-owned data, user-owned AI, which again, for those who are not familiar, right now you're pretty much giving all your data to someone. Uh, there is a kind of model that runs that is controlled by a centralized party and they're deciding what you see. And they, like, it can be coming out from a model, it can be coming out from an advertiser, it can be coming out from everything else. You obviously have this trustless interaction blockchain experience with chain abstraction and you have the experiences, right, uh, that are pretty much generated for you uh, kind of on the fly by your AI model based on the coordination of that's happening. So, uh, you know, join other talks to learn more about this. So I'll just uh, encourage everyone to assemble here for the chain abstraction, and you know we'll we'll have an amazing day of talks here uh, to div dive in into this. Thank you. Yeah.